So back inside the uh, SR22 with the Garmin G1000 perspective, I have an airport loaded up here. Uh, the closest ILS from my position, um, even sitting on the ground, is about you know 15 miles away. Um, so I got an airport with the ILS. I will press direct enter. Let's get it loaded in there. Um, and then you press to procedure, and you can select the approach. We'll select the uh, first one. So we got ILS six in there. Um, just bring it down vectors, of course. Of course, you got the frequency one 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 point five, and it also happens to be one one point five volts in in uh, the slot one and two nav slots. And then bring it down there. That's also the identifier IRSW. Bring it down here. Um, load. Of course, yes. And then I can also now just loading it. It's just bringing me, you know, to vectors. So straight to the uh, uh, first point there of Tropic. And of course, you got the GPS magenta to your next waypoint. Now, when I activate this, right? So at procedures activate approach enter so now it kind of changes up so this here 11.5 is green you, I have the ILS frequency in there it is active um, and then also when I come aligned with it it should also say up here IRSW um, and that is actually the identifying it so I don't actually have to listen to the um, Morse code now another thing that changed here was that the GPS went from Magenta to Localizer 1. Of course, ILS nav there. Um, and now it's also automatically put in the um, the inbound course. As well as you'll see a glide slope here. And of course, no glide slope has met yet, but then it'll also be the um, green diamond that you'll follow down. Pressing on flight plan, um, it'll also come up with the list of the uh, points as well as um, down to the runway six, and then also the go around or missed approach procedures, as well as the hold. Now, another way you can do this, so I press nearest, um, APF, I will also press procedures in the nearest box, select approach, enter, and I can, using the FMS here, I can, um, look at the different approaches. Uh, I will choose RNAV runway 5, the LPV, which is just normal, so enter. Uh, let's do uh, the most far out point, which is a VZAF, minimums off, and activate. Now, of course, we can see different things change here. So now um, here, it's actually showing me a direct magenta line out to the nearest point here, which is um, VSAF. Um, there it is right there. So going to flight plan, you can actually see all the different points that we'll be coming up to. And now over here, um, you switch to CDI, it was still on uh, the localizer there. Now this is bringing me out westwards, which is out to the point out there. But once I would reach this point, whether it be ATC or you know with the last clearance, then it would then turn inbound and just like the localizer, you would follow it. Now there is no vertical guidance, so you're not gonna be seeing any glide slope whatsoever. If there was vertical guidance, uh, such as found with the WAS capabilities, it would you would find a glide slope. However, it would be a magenta diamond to match this. Whereas the localizer, if you remember, it would have been a green diamond for the glide slope matching the localizer CDI. And when I activated uh, vectors to final and the MFD, it also kind of showed the inbound course and, you know, current state. And then um, it also has the next point, which would be Duffbo after VSAF. And so that's how you load it up and a compare and contrast uh, between a RNAV and a um, ILS for the G1000 system.